Yes, and off we go. We're all off. Okay, so can we quickly introduce ourselves holding the mic and see if you can hear us, Adam. Put your thumbs up if you can. Uh, so, well, let's start at one end and systematically move through. Uh, hi, Adam. And everyone else watching later, I suppose. I'm Scott. I'm from the States originally, but I've visited Australia for the last 10 years. I've been a teacher all that time, and I'm just, after all this time, finally actually getting my teaching certification. Uh, master's in teacher primary. Thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm Ellen, and I'm doing the Bachelor of Primary Ed. I did my first year at ACU, and I'm currently working at a to today down in Canberra. Welcome. Hi, I'm Eunice. I'm doing a Master's in Teaching Secondary, and um, I'm currently a primary training teacher, and I am quite passionate about um, in working with students in second language, uh, English as a second language, so I'm now doing my secondary Hi, I'm Tamara. Um, I'm in Bachelor Primary. Um, and you live? And I live in Bessemer Park, Hollerton area, but I'm originally from Melbourne. Originally from Melbourne, and in May this year. I'm getting married this year. <laughs> this semester. Semester. Yes. Yes. Which okay. is quite interesting in terms of workload. Catholic meeting and cooking, of course. <laughs> the way that it always goes. Hi, I'm Amber. I'm studying the Bachelor of Education Primary and I'm the manager at Wetmore Sydney and I also work at the Starline Driving in Skiing in Wetmore. Mm -hmm. Drive in? Cinema. Yes, yeah, cinema. I didn't know there was a driving center in Jarvis. You do get about, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Go Hi, Hi Anu. My name is Vijay. I'm from India and I'm doing the Master of Teaching Secondary. Subjects? Subjects are uh, commerce and foundation of Christian learning. Yeah, but it, your curriculum subjects. The commerce. English subjects are commerce, economics, maths, and economics. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Hi Adam, um, my name is Manon, I'm from France and I'm doing the Master of Teaching Primary. Good day Adam, I'm Michael, I'm from Australia. I'm from Australia. Okay, thank you. Well, there we go. Sorry, sorry Adam. I'm just saying great to meet everybody. <laughs> it is, uh, and I'm so sorry that there are, in these two groups combined, I haven't dared add it up, but I think it's about 25. So there's a huge Bachelor and Masters combined. There's about six from South Africa. Um, so I guess the time zone hasn't worked for them. They'll be still in bed. Yeah. So, okay, the floor is yours. What would you like to, I suppose we should give Adam first crack. Um, any, what questions would you like to throw into the mix? Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my mind. Um, oh, oh, I'll think of some for you. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, but okay. So you'll respond to whatever's happening. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I thought that it would be good to reflect a little bit about the assignments because during this <laughs> Are you alone, Adam? Oh, I, that's my <laughs> that's my six month year old. <laughs> ah, <laughs> we suddenly got some sound effects from uh, stage yeah. left. Yeah, it wasn't me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd lost your voice by now. But <clears throat> where were we? Um, I thought it'd be good to reflect on the assignments. We haven't spent much time this week talking about them. We just introduced them at the beginning, but we haven't really um, spent much further time. So if I could just uh, throw a few comments to you all about the, the reflections, the weekly reflections that, how many of you have, 
put your foot in there. Yeah, the start of the reflection. One, two, three, four ish. I see four hands, five hands. So thank you for that. The, uh, just to clarify, you don't do a cover sheet, you don't do a word file for forums, you go directly in. Um, you don't have to respond to other people, but it's nice if you do. Uh, and if your responses, uh, if you are responding, please remember to be on the positive and don't go and blast them for having a contrary view to you. Uh, be constructive and supportive. And if you're responding to others just a little bit, you know, a couple of lines would be absolutely fine. And tendency for the conscientious, especially at the beginning of semester, is to write too much. So do pace yourself. The whole idea is not to, you know, make this a burden. I'm more interested in you reading the paper than actually necessarily crafting a wonderful piece. Okay? So if you get one nugget from it, that's fantastic. Any questions, comments about the forums? You know that they're open for a week after the so-called deadline. That is for people's life to get in the way and you've still got a window. If you really get stuck and you're missing one by a week and a bit, a week and a week, then just send me an email and I can unlock it for a few more days and then you can pop your thing in. Don't feel, ah, the world's caved in and I can't get this forum in. There are often ways around. <coughs> Any questions, comments from anywhere? Uh, the, the only thing I'd like to, um, to, I suppose, clarify is, so in the, some of the bachelor courses um, and, and in the subjects, the forums, they really push you to engage and talk and engage with other students and comment on different things. Whereas you're more worried about us, more or less reading the uh, required readings, you know, and drawing from those. Is that, is that what you You've nailed it. You nailed it. That's exactly right. The uh, since we've had weekly forums, um, and we've been we've had them now for probably three years in a third of our subjects, I would say it's it's served its purpose, I think, in bringing the onlineers and the and the uh, intensivites together. Um, and there's been maybe a quarter. Of, of, the, of the people have done their comments on other people. But it's done the main thing and got the momentum going and getting a, a reading habit. And it's not just everything happens in the intensive and then we forget it. It's, it's actually a, a whole semester's work. So yeah, it's to get the engines going, especially at the beginning of semester before the other assignments kick in. So I'm happy with the way it works. Uh, when we mark them, uh, I better give you a comment about the feedback. You won't get any f uh, feedback from me on these forums unless I happen to leap in and make a comment about the odd one, which I hope to do. Um, but at the end of the semester, I go and review all your posts and I'll make some rude comments or some positive comments about, about your, your comments in general. And, but it won't be anything specific. It's not the sort of thing, oh, well, I know what to do next. It's more of a, a summative reflection rather than a, oh, you, start, you need to start doing this in your forum. Now, don't expect that. You'll get a, uh, a mark at the end of the semester and a general comment. All right. But yeah, good observation, Adam. Um, anything else on forums? And does okay. this apply to all the other subjects as well? Well, in education, that's more or less our vibe. It's our policy that we've been running for 11 years, no, nine years. Um, and it may not have been written down, but I do try to get around the ears of the, of the uh, sessionals. And because they say, well, how do we mark these things? So I have a, a bit of a, a PD with them and talk about these things. And they've been happy. They've been happy with our approach. It's, it is very different from a bachelor uh, forum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> On average with theology, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Moving along. You'll scream out if there is something, I'm sure. So the minor assignment. Uh, Adam, have you had a look at that one yet? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm passionate, and we had passion in the in the chapel today 
uh, I'm really passionate about this assignment. Um, and you've got to read that one and a half lines. How is the attitude of schools and families to children changed in the last 60 years? It's, I, I think it's really fascinating to try and get your head into what is a school or a family's attitude towards kids. And let's have, uh, me, I'm doing too much talking. Um, with the microphone, please, to, to try and get the sound working. Who's got the mic? Um, please give me some of the initial thoughts you've had on uh, attitudinal change. Somebody. Manon, you're holding the stick. No, I'm passing it. You're passing it. <laughs> well, somebody has to pick up the baton. I can see that, Ellen. Um, so we were discussing the other day how um, back before World War II, the kids had to take up a lot of responsibility because the parents were either killed or they needed extra help at home. So, um, yeah. Can you hear Ellen? Yeah, sorry. I just had to uh, get my wife to do something for me, but all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can hear Ellen? I can hear you. I just muted me so you couldn't hear me talking. <laughs> oh, okay, no, that's cool. Yep. All good. Right, yeah, no, just like to repeat what we were talking about the other day. Yeah. Was, yeah, so the kids, they had to pick up all the responsibility and that has kind of changed the attitudes afterwards of what kids are capable of. Can I, can I interject? You, you are quite right to compare uh, post-World War II with before World War II, mm -hmm. but you've got to look very carefully at the title yeah. because it's changing attitudes since. So you can't spend a heap of time comparing 1930s with 1950s. Yeah. I mean, if you had a sentence about the 1930s, that's no big deal. But if you, if you, another thing, if you start comparing Australia 2000 1950s with America 1950s, oh, 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 no, because it's entirely about Australia. Oh, and yet it might be similar in North America, but don't spend any time dwelling on the examples of overseas or before or during World War Two, you've got to go after World War Two. Carry on. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that um, the attitude shift comes in when we can see what kids are capable of and what potential they have and the tasks that they can actually do. And since then, like we've kind of gone, okay, kids are able to do a lot more than I guess previously thought. Um, so we've given them a lot more. Liberation tools. Yeah. But the, the funny thing is, yes, I would endorse that word, they've been liberated. But I wonder whether that is, but why have they been given that liberty? And I'm not asking you necessarily, but somebody else take it and unpack this title a bit more themselves. I can see Scott's got the mic. Here we go. <laughs> So I think that um, in general, we're starting to view children more as rational human beings who have a valid voice. Whereas before there was this maxim that children should be seen and not heard, where the attitude seems to be much more towards letting the child have some sort of input in their into their education. I don't know if that's my own personal experience or general experience, but it seems to be fairly general to me that the child, in, even just in social context, um, the child now has a voice and they are being listened to. And so it's, it's created this great shift in education because now children can opine and play a role in yeah. education, whereas before they were just subjected to it. Uh, while Scott's got the, the mic, I'm going to quiz you because you're an American. Yes. Who happens to be living in Australia by choice. Um, uh, last year, I, I think it was last year, I noticed a huge um, revolt of school kids in America because they felt their representatives in Parliament were not listening uh, when it came to the, the gun laws. Now, from your perspective, do you feel that the kids 
have had an impact on that debate? Definitely. Actually, and this is something I wanted to, when we talked about this the other day, I really wanted to highlight the fact of the importance of children's revolts around the world. I don't know of any in Australia, but I know there's the anti, or there's the gun, um, like gun law legislation and reform that's happening. It started primarily out of the school in Florida after one of the mass shootings. It happened so much in the state. It's really unbelievable. Um, and so these kids stood up and said, no more. This is ridiculous. Why don't you change this? There's also another- And is that going to be changed? At the moment with the current administration, probably not. Um, it's, we talked about the pendulum, right? Yeah. It's this way. In ways, no, it's this way. Far right <laughs> in the States at the moment. Um, it'll swing back far left, but the thing is, is with the checks and it's nothing ever really gets done in this case. I don't really see um, much change happening. It's the Second Amendment. I mean, it's the Second Amendment that they even own guns. They thought it was so important that it's the Second Amendment in the state. It's going to take a lot to change it. Um, but there are other movements too. Right now, there's this movement in, I think it started out of Sweden, of these school children who've risen up for um, for global change for the economy or for the for ecology for the environment and they're not going to school as a protest they're not going to school until their politicians make a change which is and that's spread all over the world and then you go back further you go back to um i mean this is slightly different but you've got kent state which is university age students but protesting against the vietnam war and then a huge one for our friends in South Africa is the Soweto uprisings in 1976. Yeah. And the fact that these children went to the street, I think about 10,000 kids were protesting because the government was telling them that they had to learn, um, they had to learn their lessons in Afrikaans, or in Dutch actually. And none of them spoke Dutch. And so it was like the original no child left behind thing, right? Where the government said, well, you're not getting, you're, these students aren't learning anything because they're testing poorly, so we're not gonna give you any funding, any funding. But they were testing them in a language they didn't understand, and the teachers were forced to teach them a language they didn't understand. So these 10,000 people took to the streets and, and protested because they wanted a fair and equal education, and then the police put fire on them and the whole Hector Peterson thing, and it was just, and that brought the attention of apartheid to the entire world. Didn't it? And the students did that. These are children. These are kids, you know, age, you know, seven, seventeen. Yeah. Who took to the streets. I think it's very, very important. And because the children have done that over and over and over, and there's money, there are other examples as well. We start to realize that yes, children have a voice too, and that's a major change. Fantastic. Thank you. Anyone else on um, the minor assignment? I, I also happen to think that. In regards to the attitude, a lot of attitudes are starting to change now because psychology is ingrained more in what teachers have to teach the children or yeah. even what teachers are expected to know. So we're a lot more aware now of Freud and Skinner and Gardner and all the rest that have done their homework, done the research and gone, well, okay, students have intelligences that you know, it's not a one size fits all, and they're just misbehaving, or they're just bitching, or they don't want to be here. It's, there's a lot more to it. So now as teachers, we, our attitudes are changing because we're realizing, well, especially for children, we're realizing, well, okay, there's actually a reason for this, so we're a lot more lenient. But we're also starting to go a bit backwards, in my opinion, because now that we have to have two working incomes coming in, it's all about, yeah, have this, have this, have this, because you can't give the attention needed to the child that they really need and they really want. And may I interject now, the thing on both those is students, if you like, protest, and your point there, you're finishing off by saying uh, two parent families, therefore materialism, and therefore blah, 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 blah. It's all fixed. Yeah, and the psych. Um, I, I still would like to probe you all. Can you 
look at what is the cause, what do you believe might be the cause for the change in those attitudes. You have, if you like, nicely surveyed some of the changes, but what about the underlying causes? Get my drift, you've described, what about what might be behind those changes? Adam. Well, maybe. Adam, what do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking from a, from a theological background and after spending you know, my degree in theology, you sort of read a lot of material about how the church across the globe is shrinking in terms of numbers attending, but it seems that enrollments in the Christian schooling you know, they, they, they seem to can't get enough of them. Like, and, and the thing that I think has captured me is, you know, what is society's attitudes toward the Christian schools versus the public schools? And is there an option or a preference for the private Christian schooling over the public system or vice versa? But I, I think it's a little bit contextual as well from where I live. We have a few, heap of public schools. There's heaps of Christian, Catholic and private schools. You know, and the private ones seem to have greater enrolments than the, than the public system does. Well, while you're there, uh, it struck me that, um, and you've got three minutes, um, it struck me that in the Hunter, I'm told that there's a, a larger, the largest proportion of Christian schools per head of the population in Australia. Have you heard that one? But the churches are shrinking and closing up and they can't seem to have enough congregants attend yeah but there's more christian schools up there than anywhere in australia apparently uh, which another thing we never discussed and that is the ability of uh parents now to choose uh what school they'll send their kids to which or i would argue is another example of the change in attitudes because they now have choice whereas in 1950 there wasn't a choice if you had heaps of money then you'd spend them to stop college or whatever but that would be it. The rest had no choice. Whereas choice is now there. So I come back to it. What might be the underlying causes of, or not causes, um, the, 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 the ground bed for the change in attitudes? I've also noticed, Aaron, I've also noticed now that parents also aren't seeing the benefits of the Christian a lot of parents will ask their, their children what high school do you want to go to? Do you yes. Go to do you yeah, go to college? Do you Tamara, to with private? respect, you're, make, you're describing another expression of change. What? Why? Where is the change coming from? Hello, Manon, have a go. Well, I already said that yesterday, but I think that's because. Um, Parents have a better understanding of psychology. That's what because, Tamara said. Yes, because <laughs> it's more readily available to them in everyday language. It's yes. publicized in magazines, and people are encouraged by the culture to yes to go and get that knowledge. Whereas before, it was do as do as, as you told, and now it's figure out what you want to be told. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to press you again. Why has the attitude of parents and schools got to that point? Where did it come from? People are more educated. So people are more educated? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is that what you said, Adam? Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, that is true, and therefore they'll be able to access the psycho psychoanalysis and all that stuff. True, but Scott, quickly. Okay, the idea of success is totally different now than it was before. Whereas before, success meant you were a doctor, you were a lawyer. Now people are starting to realize that success is so much more than that. So you can go and you, see, you can succeed as a computer programmer, you can succeed as an athlete, you can succeed as an artist. And so that end goal of career, which is, I think, a, a major motivation for a lot of people in their choice of education, is different now than it was. So if the I think what we're starting to recognize is interest, personal interest, plays a lot in education. And so the parents view what is going to be the best for the child is going to be based on their natural bents. And, and, and who's education. responsible for this? Which part? Who's so responsible for that change? Yes. I think there is no who. Ah. 
there is no. It's just a, it's a societal thing. Yeah. It's it, it's um Ooh. it's exposure. Now the world is different. You see more, whereas before you can you would just hear anecdotes. Can and I drop into the mix? The pill. Red pill or blue pill? Contraceptive. The contraceptive. <laughs> oh, the pill. Oh, okay. <laughs> and whoever invented that has now given family's choice. How many kids they're going to have and when to have them. Whereas before there were hmm, a consequence. Now they're a, a plan. I, I mean, I'm not saying anymore. I'm not saying anymore. But I think that might be getting at a change in attitude. And that's and going along with that, people are having children later than they were, whereas before because it was of the education, sixteen and knocked up, you know, and have a kid. Um, and yeah, and and so it's like you said, it's it's more of a choice. There's more education around sex and um, ownership over your own body. Hmm. I think that's I think that's playing a lot of role. There's also um, Equality, a lot more equality oh, between pretty. men and women, and so. And did that come out of the pill? I think I think the pill came out of that. It came <laughs> first. The <laughs> pill or the pill? <laughs> <laughs> and so now, well, you talked about the two family yeah. income, the two income family. Um, I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. I think there are a lot of. Huh? Pros and cons. Uh, this we're getting into a really deep subject here, but um, the fact of the matter is that men and women are both in the workforce, which means you don't have anybody at home. Yes. Which means you can't, you don't have time to have a family, so you have them exceedingly later. Which means you put more thought into it because, sorry, young people, but as you get older, like you start. You're looking at us to... when you say young people. <laughs> well, you're getting married. Let's yeah. face it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm also 26. Yeah, but people who are having children in their early 20s are going to have different, are going to make different life choices than someone who's 40. Look, uh, Adam has to go, and we must wrap this up. Um, as you can see, this is a what's called an argumentative essay, <laughs> and you have to support your. You can't just have you know, harebrained schemes and drop things into an essay. There has to be substantiation. Uh, so enjoy everyone. Uh, it's going to be a fun packed essay, I can tell you. And there'll be more Zooms for, for the other assignments, etc. Have a nice day. Nice